All right. Another day, another dollar. Good morning, Anna. Good evening, Keenan. Pleasure to have you all on stream. Now, GJ, what what can we say about GJ right now? It's on an absolute tear. So I'll give you that. Give you that thing. Holy crap. So, I don't know. It looks like it's going to break the high. I'm not going to have a stop loss underneath this candle because it's got no wick. Even though it would be like seven pips. Can't have it under this one because it'd be 16 pips. We're not really going to be doing that, are we? GJ. We just need GJ to just, just cool your jets for a little bit, GJ. You know, consolidate maybe for a little bit. Man, what what happened? What happened for this to happen? Can someone please, please, I would, I'm begging you, what is going on? Mate, it looks like London's getting all the good moves. Especially the, the first little move, like this. What time was it? Four o'clock, so, yep. Man, if you were in London, you'd be up 40, 50 pips. Hmm, what to do, what to do, what to do. So, okay. Looking at this, we're bullish. <laughs> We're definitely bullish, all right? So we got that part down pat. Now it's a matter of looking for some sort of place, potential place where GJ could well and truly form a support to continue heading up. What I've come to the conclusion of is GJ here has broken and closed above this previous four hour, right? Which is usually a pretty strong level, um, yeah, level of resistance, right? So now that we've broken that resistance, it's we're looking to see if it creates a support here. Now, obviously this 15 minute candle did close bullish, but it's 15 minute time frame. Like it's very, very weak. What I'd wanna see is Hmm, what do I want to see? I would like to see, yeah, I think we can do that. So yeah, once this 30, I want to see how this 30 minutes starts playing out. At the moment, the next resistance is like 139, yeah, 560, which is about 20 pips away. So what I'm looking for on GJ right now is for it to maybe create a support here at like 139, 290 on the 30 minute time frame to then continue heading up and through. We are the start of the new four hour and, the, and this looks really good too. It looks really good to continue heading up. Like we've made the bottom wick, we've wicked into this support. See now it's just a matter of, you know, if GJ breaks the high of this 30 minute candle, right, could that be potential for an entry? I think so. I think so. Because what that would mean is that the one hour should close bullish and we should continue heading up. So that's what we're gonna wait for. I'm gonna see what is going to go on? All 
All right, what is everyone saying? G'day Rob, g'day Ricky, Keenan. Yo, I saw the move, but it didn't retest for my entry, so I left it there. Good stuff, that's it. Good, good, good. Um, as long as you didn't get FOMO, you can control your emotions, that's good. Rob took half risk, buy stops, awesome. A lot of half risk there, Rob. Uh, why don't you just take full risk? Price rejected previous 30 minute resistance. Resistance, yes. Kind of. At the moment, yes, it looks like it is, but I'm probably gonna see how this plays out. I think we might be getting some buys soon, potentially. Hmm. She's been running so hard. This is insane. It's kind of a matter of like, okay, it's run this hard. Will it stop? You know, where where's the puck gonna stop? So as you can see, one hour is flipping bullish. See, this 30 minute close so weak, right? So it's like, you know, is that the retest of this support, right? To continue heading up? It's likely. You now I've got like a 15 pip range, like a nine, 10 pip stop loss. Looks pretty juicy. What are we at? We're six minutes in. Yeah, I'll be looking to take a buy once GJ breaks the high of this 30 minute candle. Hmm, so I broke the high here, but it hasn't broken the high on my MetaTrader yet. So I'm gonna wait to see that line up nicely. Interesting how that happened. Because yes, I think that if GJ can break out, <sighs> yeah, I think so too. I think so. Yep. So let's get in a trade. Oh, Joyce. Settle down there, GJ. Gotta let me enter. Far out. All right, we're in a trade. Nice and early. About 10. No, that's not right. What do we got? Okay, 10, ooh, 11 pip stop. Must have gotten in a little late there. That's all right. Yep, cool. The reason I like this is like just clean candles, right? Really, really clean, makes sense. What's going on here with GJ? Like this, Seems to be ahead of my MT4. Is anyone seeing that? Anyway. I don't know what's going on right now. Let's have a look. All right, so we've broken the high, looks great. So now, as long as price doesn't come down and make a new low on this 30 minute candle, it should continue to make high highs and high lows. We're in the second half of the hour as well. So I'm expecting a push. And yeah, we should at least get 10 pips. I need to get my runner target. I think my runner target we could get a nice runner target to like, yeah, I think like 139, 870 would be a pretty good target. Yeah, so now what I'm expecting is this 30 minute candle to close bullish and then continue the trend. Pretty much.
Oh, so Rob's getting it as well. Cool. Yeah, that's it's very interesting, isn't it? I I think that's happened like maybe once or twice before to me, but oh well, mate. GJ's on a tear. This is insane. Well, if anyone thought that we might not be bullish for GJ, uh, <laughs> I actually thought we we're gonna head down on the higher time frames. To be honest, I honestly thought that. GJ was going to continue up, but now it kind of looks like we're we've faked out on the daily time frame. But that's okay. Um, let me just get my trade sorted. Hold on. All right, so we've got first TP, yeah, around there, which is good, which is good. All right, let's say hello to the crew. All right, who have I missed? Hey, Ethan, how's it going? Salad morning, guys. I made a mistake this morning. I broke my rules and got burnt. Ah, damn, that's all right. Make sure you just learn from it. And I guess, you know, you're going to break your rules every now and again. Um, eventually, you'll start breaking them less and less. And as long as that's happening, then, you know, you're on the right track. Uh, creative males. Hey, how's it going, mate? Hey, Mark, how's it going? Good to have you back, mate. Rob's in. 139, yo, Dan, 139.300. What's the purpose? What do you mean? It's because it's the four hour, the four hour candle. I, I actually, I use these quite a lot for my high time frame targets. And it kind of makes sense, right? That if price creates like a support there, obviously, you know, when it's a target, it's a major resistance. So if it broke that, then, you know, and now it's created like a support or it's showing it's creating a support, then yeah. That's, that's why, that's why it's there. The four hour, it's like the four hour candle. You'll, you'll see that, right? So when you're looking for higher time frame targets, you'll see that I use like four hour candles and daily candles as my targets for runners. And sometimes, you know, support and resistance levels. Most of the time, support and resistance levels. Because what you need to understand is that if a higher time frame closed at that position, then it's likely that, you know, there's some sort of support or resistance there. All right, let's have a look. What's going on? 15 minute closing nicely too. A minute and a half left. Hey, good morning, Leonardis. Good morning, Will. Hey James, how's it going? Thanks Ethan, I'm doing good mate. Masala, I thought we were going to go down as well, but it's pushing, I'm expecting reversal in US session. Yeah, likely, maybe. We'll see, I'm not gonna fight the trend. If the trend shows that yes, it's going to continue, it's, it might reverse, then we'll look for the opposite trade. But at the moment, um, it's looking pretty bullish and we're just going to ride the wave. Uh, Masala, please tell me yesterday you said at 8 a.m. US time the US market is open. I thought it opens at 9 a.m. So what happens, right, is that the session begins, right? So the pre-market um, volume starts to come in. So that's where um, a lot of volume starts coming at pre at New York session open. And that is in, hold on, in about two hours from now, Two hours? Yeah, two hours. 
And then the hour after that is the New York Stock Exchange open. So there's two, there's two times you need to be wary of. The New York session, and then the New York Stock Exchange open, the actual exchange, right? And those two times cause a lot of volume in the market. All right, so the 15 minute candle closed bullish. So yeah, as long as price doesn't break the low of this 15 minute candle, we should continue heading up. <clears throat> hey Alex, how's it going? Good morning. Masala, okay, thanks. That's the reason I lost today. I did not time them properly because I did not understand the difference. Oh, okay. Oh, London session. Yeah, you'll probably have to, you, you know what you do, right? You just look at the candles, right? Look at the hourly candles and look at where, what time the high volume candles happen. Right, and it's likely that's just gonna continuously repeat over and over again. I'm gonna close half here. I wanna close half. I don't like how, I'll probably, I may look to re-enter it later once the, maybe if the 30 minute close is bullish, but I just don't like how far this 15 minutes coming down. I'm just not comfortable with it. Go to trust your gut, you know, trust your instincts. Let's have a look at the five minute. Maybe let's see what's going on. So yeah, it's it's wicking down. Now it's just a matter of, you know, how far will that come down? Looks like it's come pretty far. So I'm gonna close the full position. 30 minutes flipping bearish now. Yeah, we don't want to be a part of this. Right, for for price to come up, right, break the high, look like it's gonna continue bullish, and then for it to now start wicking, um, flipping bearish with without continuing momentum, this is how we want this, we wanted this candle to look. How this one here exactly looked, this is how we wanted this one to look. Right, I'll probably wait for the 30 minute candle to close and see what, can be done. But at the moment, yeah, it's not looking too good. We'll see. Has still hasn't broken the low, right? But you know, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to close early. 
And you know what's also going through my head? Like, obviously GJ can go on a tear, right? We all we all know that. But there needs to come a time where it starts to consolidate. Right? And it's likely that after this massive move that we had nearly 50 pips, we should we'll probably start to consolidate. We'll see, but that's what I'm kind of anticipating to happen. You know, I also want to see this one hour close too. So let's see. Probably in a little bit of a rush to get into that trade. But that's okay. Yeah, whenever I see, whenever I see candles, you know, go up, you know, this, this 15 minute candle, for example, right? When I saw this candle wick up first and then flip bearish and start to push hard bearish, I was like, okay, how far is this possibly going to go? So that's when I closed half, right? Cause we're all about minimizing losses. And then from there it was kind of just the feel thing, right? We've got eight minutes left in this hour candle and you know, we're just going to wait. Gonna wait for the one hour to close, gonna wait for the uh, 30 minute candle to close, you know. Let's see. Hey Uma, how are you? I'm well, mate. How about you? Probably you should trade London. I'm in buyers from 139. Holy crap. That is awesome, man. Masal, I never close unless I'm sure of it. Nice. Well, that's it, right? You need to have, you need to have your rules to be like, okay, how am I going to be sure? Like what's, what am I looking for? Creative, creative Mouths, I'm looking for, I'm looking from Portugal. Oh, very nice. I'm a newbie trader, but I'm learning with your explanation. Thanks for sharing. My pleasure, mate. It's good. Welcome from Portugal. He's classical, Euro JPY, check it out for me. Thanks. Um, he's classical, I need you to send a chart first. And then I'll have a look at it for you. Send a chart, send with your analysis, your words, right? And then I'll do the same my end. Hey, Chris, I think it's Chris from South Australia. How's it going, mate? So yeah, I may, seeing how this one hour candle is going to close. Oh, it's 15 pips. Yeah, just gonna wait. Wait six more minutes. See what happens. Probably what I should have done to start off with, but it looked it just looked too good to be true. You know, too good to potentially continue up. Had a nice risk to reward as well. It actually hasn't come, it hasn't broken the low. Right, so that's what we're definitely keeping an eye on. Oh, South Africa. <laughs> oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> sorry, I'm from I'm from Australia, so it's like, ah, oh, okay. SA, South Australia, that's where my mind goes. Well, it's looking good. Looking good. Still got five minutes left. Masala, I did take this buy hay and it looks good now because it's flipping bullish. I wish you were trading London and US. 
<laughs> yeah, me too. But you know, you need to. I need to have a life. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Uh, you know. Too much trading. Too much trading time. You know. Got to pick your pick your time in the market. Okay, now this is looking pretty good. Let's see, looks like it's going for take two. Four minutes left, 15 minutes flip bullish. Okay, okay, now we're talking. How hard is it going to push? That is the question. It's looking good, so if you're still in buys, very good job. Very, very good job. Very impressed with this 15 minute candle. I was able to do what it did. Guess I should have stuck with my analysis. That's right. Wait for the one hour, let's see what happens. Masala, do I th do I think it's going to exceed yesterday's high? I think it already did. Smashed it. Paul, Paul, you're allergic to losses, single sign, and you're out. I love that. Yeah, just look, in my experience, usually this candle would have would have did the wick up that it did and ripped down. Like this would have like usually been a fake out or something but yeah you just got to be active on that front you know you can't you can't just let price do what it does because if you do like it's good to let it breathe a little bit but when it's at this stage where it's kind of like okay you know we've gone up so much so how far can this can this thing possibly go it's kind of like that where you start to think, hmm, you know, where's the top going to be? But as you can see here, it's kind of calming down around this level. So it's actually looking pretty good. So what I'm expecting now in this new one hour is I want to see, I want to see the candle wick down, wick down a little bit, not break the low and then start to flip bullish. And from there, I'll be looking to take some re-entries. But until then, yeah, just gonna wait. See at the moment, what's this range we've got going? Like a 10 pip range. Four hour looks clean, right? One hour. Yeah, I'll probably look, actually I might even look for entries as it wicks down, let's see. Does that have a wick? Interesting, interesting. 
15 minute close bullish, 30 minute close bullish. So basically everything's lining up, right? It's a very, very ideal trade. All time frames are lining up, which is really good to see. Daily, four hour, one hour. 30 minute. I don't, I just don't like that wick though. No wick. Yeah, I might pass. I'll pass. So now what you got to think, right? If you're in this trade, you know, and you're in your buys, you're in your buys, you know, you took an entry as it broke the high or you're in, you know, around like 139, 300. You need to start thinking, right? from a sales perspective too. You need to have both hats on at all times. Now, what you'd probably be telling yourself is, okay, I'll probably wait to see how the 15 minute candle closes, this next one, to see if I'd still stay in the trade. Right, I probably made the mistake there that I entered before I waited for this 15 minute candle to close. And if I'd waited for the 15 minute candle to close, I'd be in profits, right? But that's trading sometimes. So what I probably should have done is yes, waited for the, at least the 15 minute candle to close. Masala, I'm in Rustenburg. Oh, nice. Well, it's going. Very good trade, whoever took those buys. Good job. I even executed bad as well. Like I, I missed, I don't know, because of that lag, there's a lag between the MT4 terminal, MT5 terminal and the actual um, trading view, this FXCM. I don't know what was going on there. At the moment, it looks like it's synced up a little bit better, but boom, nice. Damn, there you go, 10 pips would have been. Good trade, guys. Now, you know, obviously this level is like one hour resistance, or it's the one hour candle. So there might be some sort of rejection from here, but you know, if you can at least hold a little bit, I believe that we're gonna to head to at least, you know, 139, 760, you know, 690. Man, GJ's on a roll. <laughs> Holy. Yeah, definitely secure. Stop loss of B, stop loss of BE, that's the way to go. Close 75%, awesome man. That's it, very good trade. Yeah, just, oh well, it is what it is. That's it, done for the day, stream over. <laughs>
Oh. All right, so letting it run to 139.690. Nice. Yep, good, 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 good. I can't believe this. This is this is unbelievable. What happened? What honestly happened? So for those that may have missed this trade, I feel like I'm not one of those guys that, you know, want to wait. If the trade was there, I'm not one of those people that wants to wait for the retest, the support to be formed to then retest the high. Because that was the trade, right? That was the retest here. It looks different, but it these sorts of retests take many forms, many different forms. Right? So what you need to understand is that, you know, it's not going to like, price isn't going to give you two chances. Like, yeah, within, you know, a couple of hours, right? So I wouldn't be surprised if this was the only trade taken for New York session. There's a chance that there might be something else, but if this continues the way it's going, it's just going to keep running. Right, obviously now we're starting to reject here at like 139.560. So we may come down, pull back, you know, create a support to continue heading up. But I don't know, I'm just not, not a fan right now of that. Because I think that that was the trade of the day. Like that was the trade of the session. I know it's early on. And yes, if you're willing to wait for the next one, then, then wait. But yeah, for me, that's, that was the trade. It just makes so much sense as well because the new four hour open, right? And that this was the four hour open. It wicked down, made the bottom the bottom wick of the four hour. So I actually expect this four hour just to push right through and basically mirror this four hour candle. So that's why that if you got those entries above one at like 139, 410, 420. You know, as long as it doesn't come and stop you out, then you are looking very, very sweet. The next problem that you might incur is that we're now at previous, like obviously this daily came, didn't really respect the resistance, but now we're coming into that resistance on the daily time frame. So, and that's also another thing that kind of turned me off the trade, right? When this, when this candle here started to wick down, I'm just like, okay, it's rejecting, you know. It really didn't make sense, um, you know, for this massive run now, you know. There's got to be, there's got to be a time where GJ will just start con to consolidate. See, this is where you're like, okay, the trade was was down here, right? There's literally, there's no proper confirmation with these candles. Obviously we're trending, which is great. And it will probably continue to trend, but yes, you know, you can't get FOMO. I think that trade that I took was FOMO. 
I honestly think that that trade I took was FOMO. 100%. I'm like, damn, missed this massive move. You know, quickly entered. And basically, from the get-go, I had doubts. Right? Whereas I should just kind of step back and just, you know, being like, okay, let's let's uh, let's settle into the session, see what GJ is doing, and then go from there. And I'll be the first one to to admit that I was wrong. That was good. Trade worked out great. So perfect. As long as you guys made some money. Um, Uma, I think we can hit 140 or somewhere near. Yeah, I, I reckon we could. Eventually, yeah. I think we've got to break 139.870 first and then go from there. Um, JT43, that's why I like to trade two pairs. When you miss the trade on one, you can still get opportunity on the other. Yes, that is very true. Very, very true. It's a good way to look at it, actually. SW Gamer Gaming, what's the profit today, Chief? Well, some of the guys here on the stream made 10 pips or so, up 10, 15 pips. Once this 30 minute here broke the high. Nice 13 pip trade. But yeah, not, not for me, mate. what we'll do yeah this looks better we can see the full picture see right now we're in about a what 27 pip range for literally this is beautiful this here you had volume coming in You'd created a support that was four hour resistance. Man. Those guys in London would have had an absolute ball. This one's very interesting. Man, what is this? Yeah, so this is why I don't like London too much. Like, how do you trade this, guys? How do you trade wick right down smashes through the lows comes back up closes bearish or weak bearish this next candle then wicks up and then does the exact same thing but the opposite that's funny i don't know how do you how do you trade that i guess five minute five minute looks pretty clean Ah, oh, interesting, interesting, interesting. Yeah, so let's keep that up like this. But yeah, if you guys caught that buy, um, definitely give a like to the stream. Would be really appreciated. What's my opinion on the on the MACD indicator? I think that I don't use indicators personally. I used to use the MACD indicator in regards to momentum and all that sort of stuff. I don't know. It's if it works for you, it works for you. But honestly, for me, no. I don't know. I just don't. I don't like indicators. I think that if I didn't build it, then. I wouldn't, I'm not comfortable using it. You know what I mean? Like everything you see on this chart right now, like these zones, this is me. Like this is me creating these zones. So that's why when it comes to an, like an indicator, it's like, you know, do I really want to put my faith into someone making an indicator? Like think about it, right? These people made indicators to make money. Right? So if everyone's using it to make money, the edge slowly diminishes, 
right? This is what you need to think about. So if you're trading the same strategy as someone else, for example, you know, indicators or whatever, RSI, you know, anything. If you're using, if that's like out in the public as a, um, a verified signal or indicator and a lot of people are using it, then it's kind of like that loses, that loses credibility to me. Cause it's like, you don't want to be trading everything, what everyone else is trading. Like you want to have an edge in the market. So if you're using an indicator that everyone else is using, then where's your edge, right? That's what I think of, that's what I actually think of indicators altogether. That unless you make your own indicator and you keep it to yourself, that's where I would trust that. But when it's made open to the public, it's like right, it's like when people, when when famous investors, they teach you their strategy how they made a million dollars, right? It, they may have made a million dollars, so I'm not saying they didn't. But what you need to understand is that the reason they give like they're selling their book of this strategy is because the strategy doesn't work anymore. And they just want to make a few extra bucks on the on the um, on the book, and maybe get their name out there. And that's basically it. They're probably just onto the next strategy. So when you're studying these strategies, you need to understand that a lot of these people, everyone knows about these strategies, so everyone's using them. So it's kind of like, where's your edge? What is your edge? And that's why with candles and you know, zones, you know, it's all, obviously the market comes with the candles, but it's up to you to interpret those candles. It's up to you. It's not up to anyone else, not up to any indicator. And that's why I see this, like just using your eyes, using your experience, adapting to the market. That's how you do it. See, like, unless I made the indicator, I just, I wouldn't understand it. Like, I don't understand MACD completely. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's that's 100% gamer gaming, right? They made the money on the strategy, they built the strategy, and now it's not working because the pub, everyone else is caught on. Well, there you go, 77 win rate on MACD, good, awesome. See, and also the problem with that too is, you know, obviously it's been a while since I used any sort of indicator, but then it's like, it's hard to understand why it's working now. And say, for example, if it stops working, I don't know, for a couple of weeks um, next month, how I, I wouldn't have that understanding of why it's not working because I didn't build the thing. Well, Rob, I think you might be in luck here. It, it looked like it was going to flip bearish. But it looks like it's continuing to soldier on. Rob, uh, that's true. Or maybe you can use an indicator and then have a unique way of seeing and interpreting it in a way where you have a proven edge. Yes, that's it. So that's basically making the indicator your own. Perfect. That's it, it has to be unique, 100%. Um, yeah, that's MACD winning is for short term, interesting. Rob, I'm the luckiest man alive. <laughs> Yeah, it just stayed in, just stayed in. Well, there you go. Chris says, while well, algorithms are programmed to counter 
Humanity tuition and indicators. Yep, makes sense. Yeah, because if what they look at, right, is they look at the win rate of these indicators and literally they're just like, okay, well, if we can, if, if this is a losing indicator or it's like it doesn't really mean much, then let's just take the opposite trade. <laughs> Okay, so GJ is pushing. Wow. There's no no words for this. So yeah, now it should it should actually it looks like it's going to break through 139570. So if it breaks through that, the next issue that we may have it looks clean on the one hour and the um, four hour, but there's a possible. I think that if you're in, if you're in a BE buy, right? If we can break above 139, 560, 570, then there's nothing really stopping us till at least 139, 850. There might, we might have some sort of turbulence around like 139, 700, but yeah, if this breaks above, it's very, very likely we're going to continue up. M15, yeah, but you can't look at the M15. Like you just, you just need to ignore this crap. Like this is just garbage, right? You never look at that, especially with your runner. With your runner, you should be looking at least one hour, right? On your one hour time, on your, yeah, on your runner, looking at time frames, 100% just one hour. Just either wait for one hour to close bearish in the opposite direction or trail your stops below the one hour candles. That's it, simple. That's how you make the most of the running trades. I can't believe this. Look how small this candle was. Something must have happened. What's going on? Something must have happened. Um, look for a re-entry, potentially. What I would look for, Keenan, right? Um, for a potential entry is if price does break above 139.569, I want it to create a support here to then continue heading bullish. Yes, that's, that's the next potential thing. If it comes, if it rejects here and comes down to 139.290, then yeah, we'll look for support here. But I just, I don't think GJ will do that. I just think it'll continue going. Because it already did the retest. So it's not like it's gonna do a second retest, you know, it's very unlikely. Unless it decides to consolidate in this, in this range, then yes, it will come back down. And that's why I would be a little bit hesitant to take that trade. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. There you go, so it's broken above. It's good to see. SW Gamer, is this your hobby or part-time jobs? This is this is full-time for me. Full-time trader. That's all right. That's I guess it's good that you you know that it's a long process, Malcolm. So I also welcome the stream. Well, welcome back. Um, that's it. It is a, it is a long, it is a long process. And you know, it just takes time. Literally, you're gonna have a lot of setbacks, but trust me, it's so worth it.
What's wrong with that question? Is this your hobby or part-time job? What's wrong? Is that the question you're... that's in question? <laughs> I don't see anything wrong with it. Colin 800 incoming. Yeah, I reckon. I reckon. Damn, would have been up 22 pips on the runner. I like it like this. We can see that it's clean on the four hour. We've got our zones. Waiting for the 30 minute to do its thing. Yeah, potential re-entries, let's see. You know what my best advice would be for you, Malcolm? Because you're in early days, just stick with the plan, right? Never doubt yourself, just stick to it, right? It's a strategy, right? So not every single trade's gonna win. And basically what you're relying on is that edge that you have in the market to just on over the long term pay out. That's it, just stick with the Malcolm. Between Trade with Monty and the stream, it's outstanding learning though. I'm glad, thank you mate, that's really appreciated. Rob's out, take care Rob. SW Gamer, do you have some kind of Discord server or something where your viewers can hang out? Yeah, there's a um, Telegram. So if you head to my Instagram, I've got like a, there's a link there and it's got the Telegram group link that you can easily join. Rob's out of the runner, nice. Secured some profits, good stuff. Awesome job, this is good to see. I'm really glad that, you know, you guys are smashing it. It's good to see. Wow, Robs, it's been six weeks already. Damn, that's nice, man. Damn, six weeks. That flew. That honestly, that flew, man. It's crazy.
Yeah, so just waiting for a support. <laughs> You're basically my best friend. Ah, oh, that's cool, man. You're my best friend too, mate. I spend more time with you than I do with my girl, to be honest, and it bothers me. <laughs> well, mate, you... You know, you want to pay the bills one day? Well, figure it out. Consider it, right? We're on the stream maybe like three, four hours a day, right? When or if, you know, you and your girlfriend decide to live together, then, you know, you spend plenty of time with her. Mate, four hours a day, it's like a part-time job, man. Oh, you both should get married, shaking my head. Hey, so maybe you can wed us. You can be like the uh, the MC. Or whatever they call those people that, that do the weddings. Help me out here, guys. What? Rob, you're joking? Man. You offend me, bro. It's called a celebrant. That's what it's called. Celebrant. There you go. Figured it out. Celebrant. I'll be right back. Damn, GJ, damn. <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> Hold on, let's have a look. Um, JP Soldier, hey. Um, all right, so did you miss an entry at the breakout of 138,800? 
Oh yeah, I don't I don't trade at that time. Yeah, that would have been London session. So what what we did take was once this 30 minute here broke the high of the previous 30 minute, um, that gave way for this candle to close bullish and then for the next one to continue up like it did. A lot of a lot of the guys caught those buys. YOLO Tesla 400, $420 call expiring right fucking hell. <laughs> Did you buy the call? Suzanne, hi Daniel. Is there a candlestick that almost always indicates what the next candlestick will be like? Hmm, yes. Now, what that also comes down to is, you know, what, what sort of trend are we in? Like if we're in a bullish trend, right? And you get a candle that basically opens and closes at the exact same point, but creates two wicks to the top and bottom. I'm trying to find one here, hold on. You know what, you'll probably have to check my Instagram page. Probably have to check my Instagram page because that will have a lot of the trading journal or the, a lot of the trades that I took or have taken. And basically you'll be able to see a lot of the same patterns uh, repeating over and over again. I don't think that there's one specific candle, but I think that there's a, very um there's patterns that are very similar you know overall patterns of the market and then from there once you identify those patterns then it's about assessing the higher time frames and then using the higher time frames to figure out where you're going to go next malcolm what's your advice on what pairs to follow so i can tell you what i did when I first started, and then you can kind of go from there. You can use that and, you know, take it and run. Literally, right, I looked for some slow, slow pairs, right? Uh, that in, that included uh, USD JPY, that included Euro JPY, uh, and that was, about, that was actually the two that I found that were quite slow, and I think that made it easier to kind of get used to the market. And then after I did that, I tried GJ for a little bit. And that the jump up from USDJPY and EuroJPY to GJ, whew, you know, it was massive, right? It was just the, the movement of GJ is just, it trumps everything, right? So basically, when I start, I then, once I started with GJ, I just, I didn't look back, right? Because I just knew that GJ was, a, was quick it, you know, you're not sitting at the trade for like half an hour, 45 minutes, you're in and out 10, 15 minutes, you scalp your 10 pips, you in and out, you know, that's it, you're done for the day. Whereas like with EuroJPY and USDJPY, going back to them after GJ, it was like far out, this is like a snail's race, literally. And like the ranges were a lot smaller, so the risk to rewards were very minimal. And literally, you know, GJ, stood out the most. I think a lot of the pound pairs are pretty good, like GBP USD, uh, GBP CAD. Um, I also heard Euro New Zealand's pretty good. So yeah, that's that's kind of what I would be looking around. Yo, Dan, what would what would be interesting is if it rejects a strong four-hour resistance and shows bearish structure on the M30 and M15. Yeah, but I wouldn't be taking sales, that's for sure. <laughs> wouldn't be taking sales, but yes, that would be interesting. It's doing, it's freaking crazy right now. Malcolm, so you just trade one pair? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not a bad flip on GJ.
Yeah, and you know what, Malcolm? I'm sure if you asked the group, right, to see what everyone else is trading, you could definitely learn a lot about you know, what other people like about the different pairs. Hey, Smart Synthesis. Hi, Daniel. Would you mind looking at the five minute candles? Would you call that a retest? Well, it looks like one, yes, on the 30 minute. Yes, you could call this a retest, but this is a very low confirmation trade, right? What I tend to wait for, if you're looking at the five minute, then yeah, that's kind of, I think this is your bread and butter. You know, once this 15 minute, ah, sorry, 15, five minute candle closed bullish like this, you could have taken a buy, yes. But for me, I was waiting for like a support to form with this 30 minute candle. So now what's probably gonna happen is that it's gonna maybe create a high, come down, create a support to then retest the high. That's probably what's gonna happen. But yeah. That's that's kind of up to you, Smart Synthesis. So what you need to understand is that, you know, that's gonna sort of repeat over and over again. So it's your job to identify the patterns in the five minutes, if that's what you're looking for. And, you know, after you've seen it happen a few times, start to execute on it. I would definitely, if you're new to trading Smart Synthesis, I would definitely stick to the higher timeframes, especially during New York session. Because those sort of trades taken on the five minute are very risky, right? And it reduces your probability of winning drastically. So yeah, when you're new, I definitely think that you should wait for like the 30 minute to one hour candles to close and then make your decisions based off that. Because what you also need to understand is that when you look at the five minute or the 15 minute, and you're looking for entries on those two timeframes, you're gonna get a lot of different confirmations. You're gonna get a lot of confirmations. So what that means, a lot of confirmations, means a lot of trades. And what a lot of trades means is over trading, right? So you just, you know, if you wanna be a disciplined trader and you wanna be consistent and profitable, you know, you just gotta minimize the amount of trades you take. You wanna take just the best, best of the best quality setups. Right, and you'll see, right, even though I didn't win that last trade, it worked out. And all of last week, we took three trades and we won all three. So we're talking 100% win rate for the, for the past week. It's unheard of in, in some, some other strategies, right? I'm sure we're gonna have some bad weeks, but if the good weeks are at 100%, far out, you know. That's, now we're talking.
You know, you know the the biggest change that I saw from going from inconsistent to consistent is yeah, basically what Keenan said is having you having clear rules and just never changing them. Even if you see like a different sort of setup and you're like, "Oh, that setup looks good." And it's on like a different time frame, maybe like 15 minute. It's best to stay away from them. Just stick to your 30 minute time frame analysis and only take trades based off the 30 minute. That way, you know, you'll be really like you'll be really set. Because if you start chasing different sorts of trades, you're just going to keep running around in circles. Right? Stick to one time frame and you'll kill it. Well, actually, not one time frame, but you know what I mean. Stick, stick to one strategy and you'll kill it. Because a lot of people don't even know it, but they're trading like five strategies. And, it, and it's killing their accounts. See, as you can see here, for me, there was no trade here. The trade was here. Right? I just, I exited too early. I, I screwed up. Right? Exited way too early. But that's okay. Wasn't comfortable at the time, so so be it. You know, now we're now we're hitting that four-hour target, and it's kind of like, whoa, <laughs> man, this daily candle. <sighs> Mate, we haven't seen this big of a daily candle in a long time. Okay, very similar to what happened here. Oh, now we're actually getting to the near the end of the month too. Interesting. See, this is kind of what I was talking about before. You know, there's going to be, GJ's not going to give you any other retest. That was the chance. Right here was the chance. Now this is just going to fly. Whether it rejects here or not, we'll see. But even then, I would want to take buys above 139.877. So if this four hour candle was to close below, it's showing that it's it's struggling to break through. So yeah, but even if it does, see now here's, here's the next problem, right? Let's have a look. Like if you're in this trade now, you've got a runner, you know, you'd start to secure it now. That's for sure, 100%. Okay, so, okay, that doesn't seem too bad. All right. So what's this range? Ooh, 23 pips, okay, cool. Yep, yeah, that could be a potential trade. I guess we've got the four hour that's a little bit closer. 15 pips. So yeah, we'll see. Here we go, yeah. But yeah, I guess if, if I see like some sort of, see now it's like, we're just, we've just gone up way too much right now. This is just like, this is insane. 45 pips in an hour and a half. And then from from London, it's now been 100. Literally, I keep having to move my MT5 um, chart upwards because it just keeps running off the chart. Wow, wow, wow. That is insane.
SW Gamer, will I be selling if it starts to go down? Hell no. <laughs> Definitely not. This is you. I if there's anything I've learned from GJ over the over the year, man, you do not trade against that trend. If that trend is telling you bullish, you that's it. It's buys. You just look for the buy opportunity. You don't you don't take the sell. If the sell shows itself, you need to make sure that you know there's some sort of confluence on the higher time frames. At the moment, there's there's nothing. Like what I mean by higher time frame confluence is like I would want to see a four hour bearish candle at this level. That's when I'd start looking for sales. Right now, all the if it dips, I'll be looking for a buy to then buy the dip and then for it to continue. Not not gonna take sales. You can actually kind of call my strategy like a trend trading strategy, nearly. Because you know, we don't trade against the trend. We basically, we follow momentum. I guess you could call it a tra um, trend trading. That could be a cool little name for it. Not that it really is. I don't know. If anyone wants to input there, more than welcome. <laughs> Will, I just come home and this happens. <laughs> yeah, GJ's on a roll. Yeah, Frank, you're right. Price action based on support and resistance. That makes more sense. That's it, Will. If you don't see a re-entry opportunity, perfect. No re-entry opportunity. Awesome. I see that too. Nothing. Um, Kenyon, hey Dan, got a question for you. What is your goal for these live streams, long term and short? Good question. In regards to impact, I would like to, you know, at least be able to impact over a hundred people. Right? Be able to have some sort of input into their trading knowledge or trading career that makes them think differently or makes them do things better or makes them question what they're currently doing. You know, just 
for me personally, I want to be surrounded by people that have the same goals as me, right? And most of us here want to trade full time. And I'm hoping that most of the people here have a passion for the markets, right? I think you definitely need some sort of, you need a passion because this thing will take you through the ringer. And if you want to succeed at this, you need to be persistent. And I think to be persistent, you need to have passion. So yeah, I guess that would be like my short-term goal, like to you know be able to help a hundred people. And then long-term, yeah, like Gamer said, I wanna have my own currency and then we can trade that. <laughs> nah. Um, I think that longer term, you know, I'd probably want to like build my, build my mentorship from there. And then, you know, actually get to, like, I know you guys on the surface, but I want to get to know everyone a little bit more, you know, just have that more of a um, personal, no, you know, personal get together. Tan Island. <laughs> You know, I just I want to be able to interact with everyone on a personal basis. You know, like it's good that you guys are typing and you're interacting with me and I'm talking, but I'd like it to be that, you know, we're all talking and we're all having like deep, um, you know, we're all having like meaningful conversation. You know, whether, whether it's disagreements or agreements, you know, building on each other's strengths and all that sort of stuff. SW Gamer, I haven't, okay, I'm not gonna repeat that. <laughs> but yeah, some along those lines, Kenan. Let me know what you think. Actually, I might have to delete Gamer. I'm not gonna accept that sort of, um, yeah, no no talk about drugs in here, please. That'd be much appreciated. If you, could you please delete that message? Yeah, no, no talk about drugs. Let's keep it, you know, let's keep it professional, guys. Come on. Professionalism is the way to go. fine if you guys talk about it like in your personal chats or whatever but yeah just not on the stream please thank you mate appreciate it um, you can already 10 pips without tail. <laughs> I know GJ's just like, GJ's rubbing it in. It's like, oh, you missed the trade down here. Okay. Let's just keep going. <laughs> um, Malcolm, what I mean is having a great win rate doesn't make full time if $500 can. Yes, that's true. But what you need to do, oh, hold on. Oh, you had a question before that. Uh, this sounds like a new question, but how much capital would you need to go full time on a normal win rate, do you think? It's relevant because we can aspire to have that much. Well, number one, this 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 will take a bit of work, but what you should look at is, okay, what are my expenses gonna be, right? What's your expenses? Uh, you may be living at home and have minimal expenses, or you may be renting and you got those expenses. So basically what you want to do is you want to pick 
a risk per trade that you're comfortable with, right? And what I would look to have that risk per trade as is like at maybe like two to 5% of your account. Or, you know, maybe two to 3% of your account. So whatever that is. So then what you want to then add up is, okay, if you take three trades, three, four trades a week, will that meet your weekly expenses? Right, so it's a bit of a tricky calculation, but yeah, just bear with me. So once you get to that number of your weekly expenses, if you break down your expenses into weekly, right? And you're like, okay, if I take on average three, four trades a week, how much do I need to make per trade to be able to cover my expenses, right? And from there, once you get that risk per trade amount, you want that risk per trade amount to be like two to 3% of your account balance of your trading account balance. So just keep that, so whatever that is. So for example, if you have expenses, I don't know, just, just off the top of my head, you know, thousand dollars a week, right? If you have a thousand dollars a week worth of expenses, it's pretty, it's pretty good living, I, I suppose. Um, so what you wanna do, right, is you wanna say, okay, if I take three, four trades, that's about $250 per trade you make. And then you'd be like, okay, am I happy to risk $250 per trade? Right? If so, well, that this is your end goal, right? If so, good, right? Do that. But then what you need to back that up is you want it to be two to 3% of your account. So two to 3% of your account is around like $8,500. Did I do that right? I don't think I did that right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Daniel. What am I doing? What am I doing? Um, 0 .0 0 0.03. Oh no, I'm right. Yeah. And that's where I would get that number from. So yeah, like a ten a ten thousand dollar account, you know, could well and truly um do do good with that. You know, around a $10,000 account, depending on your expenses, obviously. And then what would happen eventually is like, you just become more and more comfortable in the markets, and then eventually you'd start building up your savings from your trading. Um, Frank, how about create a respectful community of traders who are consistently profitable and who work towards helping and encouraging each other? Damn, I like that. How about a respectful community of traders who are consistently profitable and who work towards helping and encouraging each other? Man, that is nice. Frank, you don't mind if I use that? Damn, Frank, that's nice. That was good. Ooh, Chris has been in it for four years and programmed MQL5 robot scripts. Damn, that's nice, man. GJ took it personal. <laughs> Yeah, nice. Yeah, good answer. I feel I couldn't trade full time myself. I need to be out working, such supporting other people like you do with your live streams. Though trading is definitely a passion. That's cool, and that and that's a good thing about trading, right? Like you spend, you can spend like two, three hours a day trading, and that's all you need, right? You don't need to be spending full, you know, you don't need to be spending twelve hours, nine hours on the chart. It's actually not good for you to be spending that long. So that's yeah, hundred percent. So literally, if you've got like a job that you do outside of trading, it's definitely manageable. Like it might be tough. Like if you're working for nine hours and coming home and having to trade like two, three hours or getting up early in the morning, that might be tough. But if it's a passion, you'll you'll make time. JT43, about to finish school, so got no expenses at the moment. Going to try taking take trading full time. Awesome, man. You know what, JT and everyone else here, if you're... If you're young, right, and and you like and you really like trading, take the leap. Like become your own boss as early as possible. Right? 
I can tell you this, right? I worked in I worked in offices and you know corporate um, finance and all that sort of stuff, financial planning, and it's you're not. I've come across a lot of different people, and a lot of them just don't have the the same aspirations. I don't know. They just they're just happy coming to work every day, doing their bit, and then going home and and redoing it all over again. Whereas with me personally, I wanted to like to do something with myself, like. I didn't want to just be stuck behind a desk all day, every day. And then like having, you know, your four weeks annual leave that you get given every year and being able to, you know, only use that time to take a break. I didn't, I didn't believe in that. So that's why I didn't really like corporate because a lot of those people just were happy to do that. Whereas I didn't really accept that. And um, yeah, so I got started as young as I could, like just got into the markets. I already had, you know, um, jumped down the rabbit hole very early on in my life, so it was pretty easy to pretty easy to um, transition over. But yeah, man, if you can get started trading full time, um, definitely recommend it. If um, you have a small account balance, though, I would definitely suggest to get like a some sort of job to be able to build that account up, because I think trying to build it up from your trading profits puts a lot of pressure on yourself. Um, but yeah, what I worked for like, I worked for like four or five years full time and I saved like 80% of my income. So yeah, I just, I smashed it. And then I'm like, yep, that's it. Let's, let's take this on. Um, Green Planet Trade, may I suggest that you have alternative income streams while tightening um, your trading skills, it will take the pressure off. That is exactly perfect. Yep. Frank, reverse engineered risk management. Love it. Thank you, mate. Yeah, that's the financial planner in me. Yes, uh, for saving build capital after sometimes you're already winning consistently. Mostly you could just inject that capital. Perfect. That's it. Perfect. Malcolm, great answer. Thank you, mate. Much appreciated. Take it from someone that blew up a couple of accounts while improving. I was too keen to make serious money without the experience. That's it. That's why a lot of that's a that's a big trap for some a lot of new traders. It's a big trap. They you know they want the quick buck, right? But they learn that you know it's it's a lot harder than that, and that's perfect. That's perfectly fine. I think that um, you know someone you need to go through something like that to understand that this isn't a game. Thanks, James Brown. Much appreciated. We're already getting people um, advertising. Hey, Honcho, what's going on, mate? Bit of a, did you sleep in today, mate? <laughs> yeah, I had the exact same comment with my mate today. So many people, including him, are content with just working their whole life, living bill to bill. Well, look, that's them. Like, they want a steady paycheck. They, they want that security. Mate, totally fine, right? Oh, we need to get rid of this guy. Hold on. Man, he's spamming the account. Hold on. I'll get back to your question, your um, your thing in a sec, JT. Let me just get rid of this guy. Oh, went away. Went away? Why can't I see it on here? Well, okay, cool. It's not even on there. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, yeah, I guess it's just security, man. I don't know. Like maybe once he, I don't know like what his situation is, but maybe he'll one day come to the realization that that's what he does want to do. I think people come to that realization themselves once they, um, you know, once they get sick of what they're doing, to be honest. They start to question, you know, is this what I want to be doing? And, you know, people have their own time frames, right? Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I can't remember. But yeah, that's that's good. You know, like for me personally, 
I, I just, I would rather spend my time and energy building something of my own than building something for someone else. You know what I mean? Um, Will, could be that one hour at 1.38, but I missed it. 1.38. Yeah. Is that, is that your trade time? It's all right. But yeah, that's it. Just journal that and see how you could have caught it next, last time. Oh, next time, sorry. Because I guarantee it's going to happen again. Um, it's quite funny that it's actually um, randomly, it's it's automatically deleting this guy's comments. I'm not even doing anything. Nah, he, uh, he got through with that one. Um, put user in timeout, that's all we'll do. Okay. Keenan, trading for me is a high interest savings account. Sometimes something I can do to get rich slowly. Nice. I like that. Get rich slowly. That's it. Usually they monthly so could cover their daily or their tired list. Um, SW Gamer, what's your best amount to start with according to your opinion? So I think that if if you're starting out, you need to just literally do one cent lots. So what that will include is probably like a hundred dollar account, like literally one cent lots, because when you're learning and when you're starting out, you're going to make so many mistakes that, you know, you, it's most likely you're going to lose that a hundred dollars. And that's not a bad thing because there's a lot of mistakes. As long as you learn from those mistakes, you know, you, you may not lose that a hundred dollars. Don't get me wrong, but you need to learn one risk management and like just all the other things that come with trading that make it so difficult. So yeah, if you can minimize your risk early on in your trading career, then once you like start to really develop some good habits, you can easily make back that $100, you know? That's probably the mistake I made that I actually started with a lot more than that. And now, you know, to this day, I'm still trying to make that back. You know, I'm in that profit phase, but that but that loss that I took early on is still, um, you know, it's still there. If that makes sense. But I don't. I, I tend not to think about it. I tend to think, you know, that's money in the past. It's it's basically the cost of doing business, um, and basically a lesson that that taught me is for anyone else that wants to get into trading, start with as little as possible. Oh, Malcolm, that's good to see. Could go full time. Nice. Well, look, man, like, obviously make sure you've got like a little bit of a, of a nest egg, like an emergency fund to cover your short-term expenses um, for at least, actually not even short-term, I would say for the next six months. You just need to be like, okay, if I'm not profitable for the next six months, will I be okay? You know, will I still have legs to stand on? Damn, Honcho's, Honcho came and went. Nice, man. Don't you think 139... Hey, Charitha, uh, don't you think 139.970 is a strong resistance? What's there? It's, it's probably a resistance, right? But... What I'm looking at is, you know, if it creates a support above 139, like 880, then it's likely it's going to continue heading up because this is like a massive four hour, you know, resistance turn support. I think it's 970. Where's 970? Yeah. What you looking at? What you looking at? 970. No, I don't think so. I think you might have your your zone a little bit high. Send a chart. Send a chart if you're um if you if I'm wrong. Oh SW Gamer, a lot of a lot of brokers take like a hundred, you know, they take fifty, a hundred dollars. I'm pretty sure. 
Don't see why they wouldn't. I've seen a lot of small accounts. Um, oh, you got a broker minimum of 250. Interesting. See you, Rob. Take care. JT43, yeah, or you can try demo. True, but I don't, I think that the biggest learning curve with trading is actually the money managing part. The actual risk management and putting, you know, not just saying, um, you know, oh, it's gonna go here, actually putting some money online. And the good thing about Forex is that you can risk like $1 per trade. You can eat, I'm pretty sure you can even risk 50 cents per trade. Like it gets that low that it's like, just it just needs to be something, you know what I mean? Like I think that just having something on the line adds that extra um, pressure and it's good pressure, right? It's not like it's gonna kill you, right? But it's that pressure you need to, to just understand, you know, like when you're trading a paper account, you just you pay you're trading with paper, so you're just you're going to develop very bad habits. Trading, um, you know, trading a demo account. The reason for that is because you know there's nothing on the line, right? You're just going to take it all for granted. You're going to be like, oh yeah, I'll take a buy here. Oh yeah, let's try taking this buy here. Oh yeah, but at least if you got money on the line, you'll be a lot pickier with your trades. You'll be like, oh crap, you know, if I get this trade wrong, I'm going to lose fifty cents. And like I said before, that's the beauty of Forex. Forex allows you to trade minimal, minimal lots per trade. And you know, and you can learn. Um, but yeah, if you want to start pay for trading, go for it. But yeah, that's my that's my um, five five cents. That's my one cent. How did, what's that saying? That's my oh, two cents. That's my two cents. <laughs> but yeah, I'll talk about one cent lot, five cent lot. Okay, I got mixed up there, guys. Um, Brian, Daniel, have you ever heard of the FIFO requirement that if you open three positions, you have to close them in, in the order that you open them? No, no, that's not true. That's not true. FIFO reminds me of like logistics or something, you know, with exports and imports. Or um or stock inventory, but no nah, FIFO no nah, that's that's that shouldn't be if that's on your broker, that's that's interesting, that that shouldn't happen. Um, paper trading is essential to start with while you learn the business. Yep, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, Honcho, I lost 10k starting now. I have 10k in my account. I trade with. Cool man, nice, nice. That's it, that's it. Demos are great for testing trades. You have not. Good for helping your mental game when transferring to real currency. Good point, Keenan. Um, I have had extraordinary success and equal failure over time. Okay, so uh, until they would follow my plan. Okay, awesome. Cool, cool, cool. I can see that the broker the broker does offer a demo account, so I would start with that before using real money. Once you think you're ready, making consistent profits, try with a small account. Nice. Charitha, how do you keep emotions out of trading? One, you, you stick to your plan tight, right? Like if you're, I would suggest, you know, you would take like one or two trades a day maximum and you trade one session and you just do it by the book, right? You have your total risk for the day that you're willing to risk and you gotta make sure you're happy with that. So if you lose both your trades, you're happy with losing that money. And literally if you do that, right? And you can you keep doing that consistently. Eventually, you'll become more and more confident with your trading, and you'll be able to increase your lot size. But how to keep emotions out is basically the only reason you have emotions is because you're too attached to your money, right? So the way to probably counteract that is to risk less, risk minimal amounts, and get comfortable risk with risking that minimum. Get consistent because the same way you make one dollar in this game is literally the same way you make a million dollars. Literally the exact same. Obviously there's a little bit um, of a difference in regards to the lot size and all that, and maybe, you know, the risk, 
but literally looking at the same candle patterns, it is exactly the same. Um, damn, you guys are going quick. Hold on. Um, feel bad and feel emotions creeping in, really feeling into what the emotion is playing at and understanding it is it is doubt and mostly about losing money. Yes, correct. That's it, Masala. Real money, real trades, you know, that's it. You know, think about it, right? Trading is like, say for example, you had a restaurant, right? That restaurant needs to purchase ingredients for the menu, right? For its, for its mains, for its entrees, whatever. So it does that before any customers actually purchase the meal. So that's how you gotta think of trading, right? The cost of doing business in trading is you need to you need to lose a couple here and there. You need to outlay some money in order to gain back that money. And make more. That's the that's the whole point. You know, you want to make a profit, you gotta outlay some money first, you gotta make some losses first in order to make the gains. Very good, Green Planet Trader. That's what, yep, I like it. Yeah, that's it, Frank. I got stuck in three positions just saying couldn't get out until I got on a chat and they explained to me that, damn, that was, um, oh, I explained that to me and I was able to close. Yeah, I don't know, I would change brokers, Brian. That's not normal. You should be able to take like three random trades and whichever one you wanted to close, you should be able to close. That's, yeah. Malcolm, take care, mate. I'll see you tomorrow. Hearing Daniel Speed read the comment, go, go, Daniel. <laughs> Thank you, mate. 100% Chris, yeah, real money at stake. You, I feel like you learn more about your emotions. You learn more about yourself. Um, Brian, Oanda is the broker. Mm, I would probably train, I'd change, man. I'd maybe go, I see, it depends where you're from, but I'd probably go like, if you're in Australia, I'd look at maybe IC markets. Green Planet, now with Corona, it seems, yes, 100%. It's never been a better time. Brian, I couldn't play stop loss. Yeah, man, get out of Oanda. Brian, just leave it. Basically, just leave Oanda. There's there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, brokers like that that literally just, like, they just want you to lose. That's, that's insane. With that FIFO thing, I've actually never heard of that before. So for them to be doing that, such a reputable broker, it's kind of, it's really weird. Maybe they're not that reputable. Um, hey, Leonardo, how's it going? Uh, is the chat moving fast or the stream is delayed way too much? Now the chat, the chat's actually really quick. Um, I'm trying to answer these questions really well. So that's why I'm kind of, um, yeah, that's why I'm kind of like taking my time. Contra, if you risk 1% with a hundred, so find them up to date. If you risk 1% with a hundred dollars, it's $1. If you risk 1% with uh, is it 10,000? 10, 10,000 is 100. It's all about equity size. Can't make 500 with 100. That's 500 increase. Well, you can, but you need skill and experience. True, true. I think that looking for 500% returns, like obviously that, that can happen the other way too. So like if you can make $500 that well, then you can easily lose it. 
Um, there you go. There you go. Um, Brian, Keenan, Hayden, Oanda, they're not good in my experience. There you go. There's a second guy. GJ's boring. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're going to get anything on GJ today. Yeah, so, yeah. Look, you know, you guys ask questions, so... Um, I wanted to, I don't want to just skim them, you know, I want to like understand them. Only way to make money on every trade is become a broker. Correct, <laughs> Chris. <laughs> That's it. Or a bank. Become a bank and you'll do well. We got through all those questions. Any more? Probably go for another. No, I might, I might close it now. I think that you guys are pretty well set for the rest of the session. Um, you know, it just looks so messy. Yeah, like, it doesn't, sorry, it doesn't look messy. It just looks, I, I wouldn't take the trade if it came down here. Cause I feel like if it came down to here, it's just too big of a range for it to be in. Maybe on the higher time frames potentially, but yeah. So, uh, Green Planet Trader, any chance of alternative background music? Yeah, I can I can uh, check that out. It'll probably still be saxophone though, cause I love a good saxophone. Um, Well, my, yes, what did you have for breakfast? <laughs> oh, Frank. Classy. <laughs> Honcho, did you catch this move, Dan? Um, no. I was, I was actually so close to catching this move. I entered as we broke the high here of this 30 minute. But then what happened was this 15 minute candle it wicked up and then it started flipping bearish and I'm like, oh, okay, this thing's going to probably stop me out. So I started to close as it was going bearish and then as you can see here, it closed bullish and continued its um, ascent. So yeah, kind of spewing about that, but not too fast. But that's, yeah, I think um, Rob caught that actually. You've been more than helpful today. Thanks a lot. My pleasure, Keenan. Anytime, man. Anytime. I was actually thinking of um, getting you guys into the Discord ASAP so we can talk on the microphones and you guys can have like a live feed. You're right, Will. And you, you've been in it from the very start as well, just like Rob. Yeah. Six weeks ago, we have so many silent moments. Now, almost two hours, this stream, always something to discuss. I know, man. It's ridiculous. It's actually, it's actually crazy how much this has grown since we first started. And it's awesome. Like, it's actually the greatest place to be to meet new people. Like, it's... Like, just think about it, right? Like all these people we're having conversations with right now, like all, all of us, how could we possibly do this in a two hour period, just walking in the streets or something? Walking in, walking at a, even at a, like a bar in two hours, like talking to all of us together. Impossible. You know, that's how I think of it. Like technology has changed everything, literally. Um, and I actually can't, I'm actually so looking forward to the discord, um, because yeah, everyone's going to be able to chat, have a talk, you know, it'd be awesome. So yeah, I'm going to try and get that done sometimes. <laughs> okay. 33 watching only 28 likes you six hit that like button now. <laughs> 
Green plan tray, where are you based, Dan? I can hear your French accent. Damn, I have a French accent? Um, no, I'm from Australia, man. I'm from Australia, mate. I'm from Melbourne, Australia. G'day, mate. <laughs> but thank you. I, I think French accent is uh, quite a quite a exotic exotic accent. See there, this is this is where I'm kind of seeing that okay, we might get a push coming up to New York um, session open. But I just feel like that now we've moved so much and we're now at a really major resistance level that I wouldn't be surprised if we just consolidated here. <laughs> Keenan, don't do Bogan. <laughs> oh, maybe I'll, maybe if, if you're not nice to me, I'll do a whole stream of going, good aim, mate. <laughs> Oh, shit. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Alrighty. I'm going to call it a day or call it a stream. Um, I will see you all tomorrow. We, I, we had some good laughs today, which is good. Hope you all had a laugh too. Um, yes, uh, Green Planet. I'm going to get onto that new, new background music. Um, also, guys, if you haven't um, already, sign up to the webinar that's coming up in um hold on in in what six days from now right i'll leave the link in the comments right sign up there you'll um hold on i've lost my child thought yeah so we're going to do that webinar on the first of september and everyone that um, submits themselves to the webinar will be able to be in the discord group for a month for free so normally open to mem like to men members only will be allowed to be um, yeah you'll be in it for free right so that's what I'm organizing at the moment so hopefully you know in the next couple of days I can get you all in the discord and we can start chatting there Frank that means you too right there's going to be, it's going to be open to everyone. If you are, if you want to have a chat, Frank, you're more than welcome to join us as well. Always, I think it's going to be a lot better if we can have like, you know, proper talking, you know, instead of, you know, you guys having to type and, you know, me doing all the talking. Um, um, what time is that on, Dan? Will it take over your regular live stream? Now, so I was maybe do, thinking about doing it during like Asian session, but if you do miss it, then I, I'll record it. So I'll make sure I get it to you. If you can't make it to the Asian session. Um, oh, that's all right. That's fine if you don't talk, Will. That's no big deal. But it's just, it's just good to like, if people want to talk, they can. Alrighty guys, I'm going to make a move. Peace out. Love you all. My accent is Asian. That's cool. I love Asian accents. What are you talking about, man? Alrighty, mate. Take care. See you guys.